This video continues on the steady state principles for converters with transformers. Uh, specifically, we will look at the uh, concept of equal volts per turn for a transformer and the requirement on the volt second balance. We have studied several requirements for non isolated converters for valid steady state operation, like the volt second balance for all the inductors, the current second balance for the capacitor, power balance, and so on. Now, in addition to meeting each and every one of those requirements for the non isolated converters, the converters with transformer isolation, they also need to satisfy um, three more requirements. And uh, the first one is the this concept of equal volts per turn. Second one is the volt second balance for the transformer windings. So in addition to the inductors, the transformers should also meet the volt second balance. So these two requirements we'll be studying in this video. And the third requirement on flex continuity, we will take it up in the next video. Now, as a quick recap, we learned about the dot conventions. And the rule number one says that the potentials at the dotted end of uh, all the windings with, with respect to their own undotted end, meaning the potential at this uh, dotted end with respect to this undotted end, if that is positive in the first winding, then when we look at the second winding, the voltage at the at this dotted end with respect to its own undotted end will also be positive. Okay? Now, this entire magnetic structure is represented by this symbol in a circuit schematic. And here, this dot, these dots give all the information that we need about the sense of winding direction in this transformer structure. Okay? So given this dot configuration, we can immediately say that whenever V1 with this assigned polarity, whenever this is positive, then V2, again with this assigned polarity, positive at the dotted end, will also be positive for a positive V1. Okay? So that's what this rule says. And uh, consider considering the uh, turns ratio N, we can say V2 is positive N times V1. Now, for a different case, um, so if the um, transformer secondary was wound with a different sense of direction, then uh, this would be the corresponding dot representation. And once again, given this dot representation, we can immediately say that whenever V1 is positive, then V2 again with the same, um, sorry, same um, um, polarity assignment as before, would be negative uh, whenever V1 is positive. Therefore, V2 is negative N times V1 for this dot configuration. Coming to the first rule, which is the equal volts per turn, says that in an ideal transformer, so you're neglecting the, the resistances uh, of the windings, the leakage inductances, and so on. So uh, with those assumptions, for an ideal transformer, all the windings have the same, first of all, they have the same voltage wave shape. So if you apply a sine wave here, everywhere else uh, in all the other windings will be a sine wave of the same frequency, same phase relationship, and so on. Okay. And uh, more importantly, all of the windings have equal magnitude, equal magnitude of volts per turn. Okay. Obviously, we're not saying that they will all have the same magnitude of the voltage. Um, what you're saying is the volts per turn, that is the voltage of, uh, that is V1, divided by N1 as shown here. And similarly, um, uh, so V1 over N1, that is the volts per turn in the first winding, that is equal to the volts per turn in the second winding, that would be V2, the applied or the applied or the induced voltage, divided by its one number of turns, and that is equal to V3 over N3 and so on. And uh, here I have a minus sign because of the dot polarity, like the one that we discussed in the previous slide. Okay? So everywhere we have the dotted end is uh, assigned a positive polarity, whereas here it is the undotted end which is assigned the positive polarity. Okay? So uh, once we know that V1 has a positive, uh, if V1 is positive, then we know that V2, V3 is po are positive, and V4 is negative because of the different dot configuration only for that wind that winding. So the the bottom line is the volts per turn is uh, is the same. Uh, in all the windings, and that is equal to d phi over dt. Okay, that's because um, uh, by Faraday's law, the voltage in any winding is um, its own, so vi, any winding, uh, is ni, it's uh, number of turns in the i of the winding, times d phi over dt. Okay. The flex is the same um, for all the windings. All the windings, they uh, they see the same flex. Okay? So d phi over dt is the same. That multiplied by ni gives you the total voltage. Therefore, vi over ni is the same as equal to d phi over dt. 
Okay, so if I say uh, V1 is, uh, let's say, 100 sine um, some frequency omega t, let's say with some uh, angle alpha, okay, volts, then uh, let's say N1 is, uh, say, uh, 10 tons, okay, 10 tons. Okay. Then uh, V4, okay, so given that N4 is, let's say, 20 tons, then V4 would be negative because the dot uh, polarity um, it's 20 turns so it will be 200 sine uh, omega t plus alpha okay, volts okay. and if you look at the volts per turn okay, in both cases okay, that's going to be a function of time and that is going to be 100 over 10 so that is 10 um, sine uh, omega t T plus alpha. That is the volts per turn as a function of time, and that is the same in both windings. Okay, in both. So that is the concept. But this seems uh, quite obvious. Uh, I mean, by Faraday's law, every winding will have the same volts per turn. So why do we make a big uh, fuss out of it, and why is this a requirement for uh, uh, a steady state operation? The reason is, um, you know, when we design the power converters. And when we design the controller and the gate right, we should not inadvertently um, come to a, come to a situation where the switching action uh, results in uh, different voltages on the different windings. Okay. So any switching action that attempts to result in unequal volts per turn in the different windings that makes the circuit an invalid circuit. Okay. So let's uh, look at this example. So I have an isolated converter and uh, I have a 100 volts voltage source and that is inter being interfaced to a 25 volts uh, battery for example okay. um, so the turns ratio is given it is 1 is to 0.5 and uh, when I turn on this switch the voltage across the primary would be 100 volts when the switch is on okay. this is a high frequency converter so let's say the turn on time is say 5 microsecond for that 5 microsecond we are applying 100 volts on the primary winding okay. now by turns ratio um, the voltage on the secondary with the um, V2 defined this way would be a positive uh, N times V so 0 0.5 times 100 so it's 50 volts positive 50 at this point okay. so let me uh, write it here during the on interval this will be 50 volts okay. now on the secondary we have a diode that connects the secondary to a 25 volt source since the 50 volts induced voltage is higher than the 25 the diode would forward bias will conduct okay that will force the secondary voltage to be 25 volts okay so here we have a situation where the primary volts per turn is uh, let's say it's one turn and 0.5 in the secondary it's 100 on the primary side whereas it's uh, um, 25 over 0.5 which is um, 50 on the secondary side so that is um, that makes the circuit invalid so this is not a valid circuit but if I do go ahead and construct a circuit like this and drive the uh, switch as indicated here, then that is really similar to connecting um, two voltage sources of different magnitudes in parallel. Okay? Um, so that would be a situation something like this. So now why is um, um, this arrangement is similar to uh, connecting two voltage sources in parallel? Okay? The reason is uh, now I'm applying 100 volts to the primary and that induces a 50 volts on the secondary and that is being connected to a 25 volts voltage source by this diode which is a switch okay, so the two situations are very similar during the on interval okay, and we know that we cannot connect a 50 volts uh, battery to a 25 volts battery so this circuit is also invalid uh, similar to this power converter be, uh, not being valid okay. now uh, actually if you change the uh, this dot to the bottom then magically this becomes uh, a completely valid circuit uh, actually in fact it's a very popular circuit okay? so I will um, actually let you to analyze this and um, um, figure out yourself why just changing this dot to the bottom uh, on the secondary side makes this a valid circuit okay? um, but moving on um, so this, um, uh, this analysis this requirement is um, assuming that uh, the transformer is completely ideal. Okay, so if you recall, I uh, neglected the uh, leakage inductance mainly, and also the uh, the resistance of the of the windings. Now, if we do consider the non-idealities, um, then there are at least uh, a few uh, example power converters which uh, at the terminal will not satisfy this equal volts per turn. Okay, one main ex um, 
a key example is this dual active bridge topology, a popular topology for um, fairly high power isolated power converters. Okay? So here if you look at the primary and the secondary voltage at the terminals, uh, they may have, they will not have equal volts per turn all the time. Okay? Uh, that is because they rely on the leakage inductance between the primary and the secondary for much of the power transfer control and so on. So it's a totally different situation. Just wanted to uh, you know, highlight that there are some exceptions to the rule um, when you consider the non-idealities. Okay? But so far, uh, we are only dealing with ideal components, ideal transformers, ideal switches. So the equal volts per turn is the requirement for uh, valid operation of uh, isolated converters. Okay, here is an example of a four winding transformer where to the primary, the first winding, I apply a voltage V1 which is uh, shown here. So this green is the applied voltage uh, and also the voltage across the primary winding V1. Okay. So that's uh, like a quasi square wave or a pulse width controlled square wave um, and V1 has a peak value of 10 and uh, 10 and minus 10. Okay. Um, so if you look at, um, so the turns ratios are given here n1 to n2 to n3 and 4 is 1 is to 2 is to 0.5 is 1. So, um, so n2 is higher, it's 2, n3 is uh, only 0.5 and n4 has the same turns ratio as the same number of turns as the primary winding. Okay. So if you look at the voltage on V2 uh, and again everything uh, in each of the windings the polarity is defined positive at the top and uh, for the first three windings the dots are at the top two but only the um, um, the last winding has the dot at the bottom. Okay. So uh, accordingly, the uh, if you look at the voltage V2, it is because of the turns ratio 2, it is twice that of V1 and it is in phase as you can see. Okay. So everywhere it is in phase with the voltage, just the magnitude is doubled because the turns are double. If you look at uh, V3, again it is in phase with V1 and V2, but the magnitude is uh, one half of V1 because of the turns ratio 0.5. Okay. So it's only um, square wave going between 5 and minus uh, 5. Okay. Uh, and if you look at V4, um, the turns ratio is 1 is to 1 with respect to the first winding. So the magnitude is uh, plus 10 minus 10. But if you notice, the um, the polarity, uh, the phase is completely, it's, it's completely out of phase. So whenever this is positive, this is negative. And when this is negative, this is positive. Okay. So that is because of the dot being at the top and the at, in the primary winding and the dot being bottom at the um, fourth winding. And also the volts per turn in each of the four windings is obviously the same. Um, so if you assume the N1 equals uh, 1. Okay. So what is given here, here is the only the turns ratio not the actual number of turns. But if I go ahead and assume N1 equals 1 then this waveform is really also the volts per turn. in all the windings. Okay, right. okay so we'll stop here and uh, take up the um, uh, old second balance principle for the transformer uh, isolated converters in the next part of this video.